YouTube here with Talk Boxing episode number 11. And on this episode, I'm going to be covering a few topics to kick this episode off. I'm going to be telling y'all my personal pound for pound rankings. Um, it's showing, it's pictured in this video, but I don't know if y'all can read it fully, but it don't matter because I'm going to tell y'all my rankings anyway. I'm going to read the list from bottom to top. And at number 10, I have Dimitri Babal, the current undefeated WBA light heavyweight champion, fresh off his biggest win. Uh, now he's more recognizable. He's more of a notable name in the sport after his win versus the damn pound for pound king. Still the top draw of the sport, Canelo Alvarez. Um, I have him ranked at number one at light heavyweight. You know, it's between him and better BF, but he's had more fights. And um, so far, he's had the better quality opponents. Um, and, you know, he's younger, and I think he's uh, more uh, in his prime than a 37-year-old uh, Arthur Better BF. But we'll see how Better BF performs next month versus the other champion at light heavyweight. Him and Smith should be a good fight. And, um... But Vol already has a win over Smith, and, you know, Smith is the current um, WBO light heavyweight champion, and for him to have a win over a current champion and, you know, a former pound-for-pound -pound king and the top draw cash cow of the sport, that's a huge impact he made last week. So I have Dimitri Bavol ranked in at number 10. Um... But this whole pound for pound ranking could change uh, after tonight because there's the undisputed uh, super welterweight title rematch between Jermel Charlo and Brian Castaño. Depending on how that fight goes, most likely the winner of that fight, whoever becomes undisputed champion at 154, and uh, it all and it also depends on how uh, how the winner wins a fight as well. But the winner of that fight will most likely make it on the my pound for pound rankings, a uh, top ten pound for pound rankings for sure. Um so yeah, um gotta, you know, stay in tune and that could, you know, uh shake up the rankings as well for sure. And at number nine I have the WBO and WBC Super Featherweight champion, another undefeated prospect on the come up. I see this guy being a future pound for pound king for sure. And at number nine Y'all know what I'm talking about. I have Shakur Stevenson ranked at number nine. He also is coming off a recent uh, big victory. I would say his biggest win of his career. He won a, a decisive unanimous decision win over the then undefeated WBC Super Featherweight Champion Oscar Valdez. Yep, Shakur Stevenson ranked in at number nine. And at number eight, I have the flyweight champion Juan Estrada. He's been inactive. He hasn't fought since uh, March of last year versus Chocolate Tito. Um, they were supposed to fight for a third time, but he had to pull out, I think, due to COVID or something like that. But he's been holding down the flyweight division scene for the longest time. And I have Juan Estrada ranked in at number eight. And then number seven, I have the then undisputed super lightweight champion Josh Taylor and I say then undisputed because he is no longer the undisputed he does not hold all the belts as super lightweight um but Josh Taylor is ranked in at number seven that's another topic uh that I'm gonna be talking about uh, on this episode as well um so stay in tune for that uh but Josh Taylor you know I would have had him ranked higher if he performed better versus uh Jack Catterall of course that was his last fight and that was a questionable win that he won over uh Jack Catterall but he still holds majority of the titles at 140, and you can't deny his accomplishments. Uh, he won the uh, Super Series World Boxing Tournament at 140 a few years back, defeating Progress, who's another top super lightweight contender. Um, and he also beat Jose Ramirez to become undisputed champion in an impressive win uh, last year when he became the undisputed super lightweight champion. So yeah, I have Josh Taylor ranked in at number seven. And coming at number six George Gambosis uh, the current majority title holder at 135 of course he had that thriller fight versus uh, Teofimo Lopez where he won at Teofimo's backyard and became the majority champion at lightweight and he he's got a big fight coming up uh, for the undisputed uh, uh, lightweight title versus the other uh, champion at 135 Devin Haney in Australia next month looking forward to that if he's able to get through Devin Haney 
and become undisputed and hold all the titles at 135, then, you know, he's only going to, you know, climb higher to the rankings uh, for sure. And at number five, I have Naoya Inoue, uh, the lineal Bantamweight champion who also won the Super Series World Boxing Tournament a few years back when they were having that tournament at Bantamweight. I have Inoue ranked in at number five. And at number four, I have Canelo Alvarez. Yeah, he's been number one, or at least, you know, up for debate to be the number one uh, pound-for-pound king uh, for, for some time now. Definitely the top draw in the sport, no question about it. But, um, yeah, he, he came down the ranks a little bit after that L he took from Bavol last week. Um, he's still the undisputed super middleweight champion. Um, he's going to go for the rematch versus Bavol. You know, if I were on this team, which I'm not, but hypothetically speaking, but, you know, looking out for him, I would say, you know, 168 super middleweight is, is the, you know, highest um, weight class that he could compete at. And I think he's a good fit there. He's the undisputed champion there. I think he's better off at defending his crown there. But, hey, he probably looks at it like, you know, he's already the undisputed champion there. And he wants to, you know, he's he's very ambitious. And, you know, that's one of the reasons why uh, so many people love him and why he's been able to climb through the ranks of the pound for pound rankings uh, for, for as long as he has been because, you know, he's ambitious and he goes after uh, the, the biggest and the best challenges, at least as of late, you know, um, a lot of people, you know, but that's a whole nother video for a whole nother topic. I don't want to, you know, discuss negativity and, you know, people hating on Canelo, of course, you know, uh, people hating or saying, cr criticizing, let me say that, say he's cherry picking and all that, that comes with being, uh, the top draw and the top pound for pound guy, but, you know, in his last three fights, you look at his last three fights, it was all against um, undefeated champions. And, you know, um, he went up to 175 uh, yet again to try and become a two-time light heavyweight champion. And he's going to try and accomplish that uh, for his next fight as well. He, he's that ambitious. You know, a lot of people say, you know, he, he bit off more than he could chew. Uh, it wasn't a Kovalev. Obviously, I covered that in the post-fight video for him versus Bavol. But, you know, um, that win, or I mean that rather that loss, you know, uh, knocked him down a, a, a few slots in the rankings, at least on my pound for pound rankings. But he's still at the a top five uh, when it comes to the pound for pound rankings. He, he, his accomplishments and his legacy is undeniable. And at number three, uh, another former undisputed champion, I have Terrence Crawford ranked in at number three, the current WBO undefeated welterweight champion. Um, you know, his skill set, I, I don't need to say much about Terrence Crawford. For those of y'all, um, he, he doesn't draw as much as a Canelo or his, you know, rival at 147, Errol Spence. But, A, hey, his skill set, his fundamentals, his accomplishments is undeniable. I mean, he had his uh, toughest fight uh, yet to date uh, in his last fight uh, last year versus Sean Porter. And he performed very well in that fight. Um, and hopefully we get that uh, mega undisputed welterweight title fight shown in between him and the other champion, Errol Spence. And that leads me right into the number two spot. And I have Errol Spence, who is the current majority champion at welterweight, ranked in at number two. Um, Errol Spence, you know, it, it's a debate uh, on who the top welterweight is. Obviously, we won't know until the two champions agree to get in the ring. Um, but I think Errol Spence, if you compare their uh, last few fights, I think S Spence has put on the better performance, especially, you know, uh, f uh, coming from what he had to face um, in his back-to-back -back, uh, injuries that he had to come back from in his last two fights. And the way he performed versus Garcia and Ugas is just amazing. Uh, Errol Spence, obviously, back in 2020, he had that horrific car accident, and he recovered, came back to fight former champion Danny Garcia, dominated and cruised away a decision win in that fight after coming back from that. And then he was supposed to fight Manny Pacquiao last year, but he had to pull out of that fight because during the training camp, he had injured his eye, and he took a 17-month 
a layoff and he came back and he defeated uh, Ugas um, who was a replacement opponent for him to take on Pacquiao and Ugas defeated Pacquiao to become the WBA welterweight champion then he came back from that eye injury scored a knockout over Ugas or rather a TKO because a referee stopped it it wasn't like Ugas was out cold but nonetheless Errol Spence uh, put on a dominating performance versus Ugas as well scoring the um, TKO and he also came anniversary uh, during that fight I had made a post fight video uh, to that fight as well y'all go check that out but uh, uh, Errol Spence uh, I think uh, his comeback fight versus Ugas uh, was a better performance versus his comeback fight uh, against uh, Danny Garcia but yeah Errol Spence I have him ranked at number two and currently at number one I have Alexander Usyk who is the majority title holder at heavyweight who came off the biggest win of his career and he is also a former undisputed champion the winner of the Super Series World Boxing Tournament when he was competing at the cruiserweight division while they were hosting the cruiserweight uh, division tournament he had won that fight uh, or won that tournament rather and then after he conquered uh, the cruiserweight division he moved up to heavyweight a lot of people thought he was too small for that division he had uh, two fights prior to his championship fight versus uh, uh, Anthony Joshua which he was able to pick up a decisive unanimous decision win um, over there in England in front of a sold out crowd in Anthony Joshua's backyard a former undisputed champion at cruiserweight and now the majority title holder at heavyweight and he's the only heavyweight champion in the sport of boxing right now i know a lot of people have tyson fury uh, ranked in that top 10 pound for pound uh, list as well a lot of you know respected uh boxing uh media sites have uh tyson fury in their top 10 pound for pound rankings as of right now but hey i don't have him on the list because tyson fury announced his retirement following the Dillian White fight. I don't know if he's going to come back. He's made enough money, so it's not for financial reasons on why he'd have to, you know, compete uh, in boxing again. And he could uh, clearly take the uh, Floyd Mayweather route and, you know, doing exhibition bouts and, you know, going to WWE and taking on other ventures as well. But that's why I don't have him on the list because he officially announced his retirement. But there you have it. That's my pound for pound rankings i would love to hear y'all pound for pound rankings as well um y'all let me know these debates are fun you know i respect other people's opinions when it comes to you know uh their 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 boxing expertise and i want to hear y'all you know breakdowns of why y'all got you know who y'all got on y'all uh, top 10 pound for pound uh rankings as well but you know speaking of floyd mayweather this leads me on to the next uh, topic that I'm going to be covering on this episode. Floyd Mayweather was supposed to have a exhibition bout versus Don Moore uh, in Dubai, but it was supposed to be tonight, but that got canceled. Uh, I think it's because one of the uh, key figures over there that was uh, responsible for promoting this fight or making this fight happen, he's like one of the sheiks over there uh, at UAE. He had uh, passed away. My condolences to him and his family. Um, yeah, I think that's the reason why this fight had got postponed. It's not canceled. I don't know if, you know, they're going to go through with it for another date. I'm pretty sure they most likely will after, you know, they go through whatever they got to go through. Um, but, you know, I you know, I haven't been keeping up with, with the lead up to this fight at all. You know, I don't know, you know, any other boxing fans other than, you know, loyal Floyd Mayweather fans, you know, that's been keeping up with this fight. Um, Floyd Mayweather, obviously, you know, at least, you know, in this generation, he's the most recognizable name. Uh, him and Manny Pacquiao, for sure, are the most recognizable boxers of this generation, without a question. Um, but Floyd Mayweather, man, his other ventures, um, after he retired from uh, uh, active boxing, He's been putting on exhibition bouts. He had that uh, fight over in Japan versus the uh, kickboxer. Um, then he had that fight uh, last year versus Logan Paul. And then now uh, Don Moore. Now, I'm going to be truthful with y'all. I have no idea who Don Moore is. Um, you know, reading up on Don Moore, he's a uh, former boxer, undefeated, 18-0 with 12 knockouts and one draw. 
Um, but I've never seen him fight. I've never heard of him while he's been while he was active. I don't know if he's still active uh, in, in in boxing today. But there's that's no disrespect to him. Obviously, you know he's somebody. He's undefeated. Um, he's got the reach and size advantage over Floyd. But I think they both you know weigh about the same. But that don't mean nothing to somebody like Floyd Mayweather, who's four bigger opponents and. Yeah, I know his record, undefeated. Um, but yeah, um, Don Moore, uh, he's not a Logan Paul. You know, he might be like, a, I, like, I know who the Japanese kickboxer is, but I can't like n get his name right off the top of my head. So y'all got to, you know, bear with me. But, you know, maybe he's like him. But I think um, the Japanese dude he fought a few years back, um, he was more recognizable uh, at least in the combat sports world and Don Moore. So I don't know if, if I'm in the right when I'm comparing Don Moore to the Japanese kickboxer Floyd Mayweather fought a few years back. But, you know, I, I'm not tapped into the kickboxing world, so I ain't know about the Japanese dude either. But, you know, at least there was some little hype with that fight because that dude, even though he was a lot smaller than Floyd, there was still hype around him because... Um, you know, he looked like an unstoppable force in the kickboxing world. He's undefeated, knocking dudes out. Don Moore, no disrespect. Not to compare him to nobody or nothing like that. You know, I'm, you know, if he's in there with Floyd, I guess he's, I'm not going to say a worthy opponent because Logan Paul got in there with him. And Logan Paul, he's a real athlete. You know, he, he's a, a decorated wrestler. You've seen his athleticism displayed at WrestleMania of uh, last month. And, and and he could box, you know. He 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 he's he's no joke. Him and his brother's no joke. But he's not a professional fighter, and that's a fact. It was more of a like a, a spectacle that him and Floyd Mayweather put together last year. But Don Moore doesn't have the clout of Logan Paul either. And like I said, this is not to knock Don Moore down. I have no clue who this man is. I've never seen him fight before. I'm sure I could search his you know clips up on YouTube. Um, but to get in there with Floyd Mayweather, hey, if he got in there with a YouTuber um, like Logan Paul, it made, you know, economical business sense. But as far as Don Moore goes, like, yeah, like, I don't know who's tapped in with the Don Moore. So y'all got to let me know, was this fight even worthy of, you know, tapping into? Because I definitely wasn't, you know, paying no attention uh, for this fight and its lead up. So, you know, I, when I recently heard that this fight had got canceled or postponed it was like okay but what's your opinions anyways man you know um this is obviously a big money fight anytime Floyd Mayweather is advertised to you know do anything this it's got big money involved in it so it's a big event of course for you know the people over there at Dubai it's gonna be a, you know a big event but like I said was any of y'all really looking forward to this event at all like y'all let me know but yeah, this fight got postponed. What's y'all opinions on it? And then the third topic I'm going to be covering on this episode of Talk Boxing, Amir Khan, uh, one of the more recognizable talents that come out of the United Kingdom, announced his retirement, um, was it yesterday or today? But he officially announced his retirement from the sport of boxing. You know, he was rumored to be the next opponent for Conor Ben. Um, when I had made the post fight to Conor Ben's last fight, I was saying, you know, I'd rather see Kell Brook get in there with Amir Khan uh, because Kell Brook uh, and his, uh, and both him and Amir Khan's last fight, they were, you know, they got in the ring to fight each other and Kell Brook came out on top. And Kell Brook, like last week or something like that, last week or two weeks ago, he announced his retirement as well. I had covered that on the last episode of Talk Boxing. And Amir Khan uh, followed that same route and, you know, announced his retirement. So, you know, they competed with each other uh, before, you know, retiring. Amir Khan, man, he's given enough to the sport. You know, his accomplishments are, you know, are there. It's not like he's, you know, a journeyman or anything like that. He's accomplished a good legacy um debatable to be a great legacy as well i mean sh i mean you know um at least in the recent times of boxing he's one of the more recognizable names in the recent time of boxing and i say great legacy um because you know he might have not won majority of his you know uh uh 
key fights, but he, he took on all comers, man. I mean, he even took on a much bigger Canelo Alvarez, was performing and boxing beautifully until, you know, he got knocked out by Canelo. Um, and yeah, he took on all comers. He was a lightweight champion, silver medalist in the Olympics. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't think he ever became a welterweight champion, but he stepped up, um, you know, and he took on all comers, man. You look at, you know, it's not a great resume when it comes to um, uh, winning, but he's also a former champion. But, you know, it's the fact that he's had great fights under his resume. Whether he performed great or not, it's the fact that, you know, he got in there with the top guys um, that was uh, opposed against him. Um, Amir Khan, um, he has a win over Marcos Maidana. That was, you know, one of his best fights and one, one of the best performances that he ever put on. Uh, he always shows tremendous heart when he gets in there. You know, obviously, like a lot of British fighters, you know, his chin, you know, was his weak point. But, you know, his hand speed is uh, great. Um, he's got some, you know, uh, good boxing skills for sure. And, you know, he's got a win over Pauli Malinaji. Um, he's got a, uh, he had a fight versus Lamont Peterson, which was close. And that was a good fight as well. He fought Terrence Crawford. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Amir Khan, man, he left a memorable legacy. And I say that with the utmost respect. Um, you know, best of luck with his future endeavors. Uh, I think Amir Khan would be great when it comes to, you know, commentating or even coaching over there in the English boxing scene. Because let's face it, yeah, um, England, they got the, you know, best, best coverage when it comes to the sport of boxing. I think they show the most enthusiasm when it comes to the sport of boxing as well. And I think Amir Khan could still stay relevant when it comes to the sport of boxing, especially over there uh, in England. And, um, yeah, man, so shout out and much respect to Amir Khan. Uh, you know, he was a fun fighter to watch while he was active. Um, yeah, with that being said, you know, yeah, once again, uh, best of luck with his future endeavors. And thank you, Amir Khan, for, you know, all the contributions that you have given to the sport of boxing. And then the last topic I'm going to cover for this episode of Talk Boxing the former undisputed super lightweight champion Josh Taylor has been stripped of his WBA title because he did not uh, uh, meet the, um, what do you call it? He was supposed to take on a mandatory challenger that the WBA had, um, uh, had him schedule to fight. It was a Dominican fighter. I don't. I don't know uh, his name. I think he's like unbeaten or something like that. But he. He's. He's more of a local talent that's on the come up, uh, at least in the WBA rankings. Um, but you know they was gonna have him uh, negotiate uh, that fight coming true. But I guess you know he didn't. You know, um, come through for the negotiating part. And that had forced uh, the WBA organization to make uh, Josh Taylor relinquish his WBA uh, belt. Of course, like I said, I said in my pound for pound rankings that Josh Taylor, his last performance was met. It was a questionable decision when he, he, he got uh, in his last fight. Um, and I think they were trying to have his fight scheduled for some time this summer, but Josh Taylor didn't follow through with it. You know, when it comes to politics with these, you know, sanctioning bodies, um, it's, it's tricky. Uh, that's the ugly part of the sport of boxing. You know, we, we're all, you know, uh, glad that these undisputed and unification title fights has been happening uh, in the sport of boxing, but with all these different sanctioning bodies, you know, it comes more politics, and that complicates the sport of boxing. This many, you know, uh, championships uh, for one division uh, has been a part of boxing of, in its recent times, and it's been one of the more criticized parts of the sport uh, ever since, you know, uh, all these sanctioning bodies were uh, implemented uh, into the sport of boxing. Uh, what's your opinions on it? Obviously, this is some political stuff, and, you know, this mandatory challenger that the WBA had lined up for him is, you know, with all due respect, it isn't a recognizable name. It's not no marquee matchup. Obviously, if Josh Taylor were to have a fight domestically over there, anywhere 
in his uh, home country, whether it's Scotland or or England, Ireland, wherever, any of those uh, countries, Wales, wherever, anywhere around those uh, areas, countries, cities, is going to draw. But, you know, like worldwide, globally, boxing fans worldwide, they're not going to be enthusiastic about a mandatory challenger that the WBA has lined up for him that most people haven't heard of. It, it just doesn't draw, especially for a guy like, Josh Taylor, who's in the top 10 pound for pound rankings uh, of the sport. And I'm sure Josh Taylor wants to redeem himself after his uh, lackluster performance uh, in his last fight. Um, and I don't think, you know, he wants to do that, even though it's a mandatory uh, challenger for one of his titles because he still holds uh, all the other titles at 140. Um, it, it's I'm sure it's not, you know, the another comeback fight that he wants to have versus, you know, a rather unknown name. Um, yeah, what's y'all opinions on that? Like, do y'all think that's some BS or, you know, it's, it's like whatever now because, you know, stuff like this in the sport of boxing is it, so casual that it's like, eh, you know, it's, it's not a good thing, but it's like, you know, like we're like kind of like used to it. Um, anyways, uh, what's y'all opinions on all the subjects I covered uh, on this episode of Talk Boxing, I want to hear y'all opinions. Uh, y'all can comment that, uh, share if y'all like, subscribe, like, all that good stuff. Y'all already know, man. Uh, that does it for this episode. Y'all stay safe, stay healthy, and I'm out, y'all. Peace.